The New South Wales state election is just three weeks away and whilst the polls have Labor on track to end the Liberals' 12-year reign, this election could be a lot closer than first thought. Now, according to recent other polls, yes, there's plenty, the New South Wales Liberals have managed to halve Labor's lead and Dominic Perrottet has extended his lead as preferred Premier over opposition leader Chris Minns. Joining me is the state member for Penrith, Stuart Ayres. Stuart, thank you very, very much for joining me. You've got a tough battle on your hands individually. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel pretty good going into the campaign. Penrith is a marginal seat. It's one of the most marginal seats in the state. And I think that just reflects the fact that the community of Penrith really represents middle Australia. And this is an awfully tight election. And so you don't take anything for granted. You just get in there and engage with people. You're talking a lot about issues around price of products, groceries. People are really feeling the pressure of interest rate rises. They're, those things are really at top of mind for people at the moment. It's less than a 1% margin. We were just talking about polls during the commercial break. Do you... You obviously have internal polling. What's that telling you? Well, I actually just listen to people oh, on the street. stop it. You no, don't it's look true. at I any... don't. Yeah, I, I just really? don't do it. Mind you, sometimes I ignore ratings. Yeah. For... No, no, I think... <laughs> so I, I just think you, you're better off just getting out, talking to people, like get to schools, get to local shopping centres, local sports grounds... Australians have a remarkable capacity of being able to tell you exactly what is the issue. <laughs> yeah. You don't need some pollster making a computer-generated analysis of it. Just go and listen and talk to real people. OK, well, I have no doubt that these real people would have brought up rentals. I work in Sydney Breakfast Radio and, and we do kind of cost of living a topic each week. Yeah. The calls on the inability of people to get rentals, to get affordable rentals, to go to somewhere and there's 70 mm. people is unbelievable. You've announced something this morning, I think. Yeah, we've tried to make life a little bit easier for people who are renting. We know that renters make up such a big part of uh, the household accommodation arrangements that we have now. People who own properties, people who are renting properties. So things like moving to a reasonable grounds model for evictions rather than the no-fault evictions, I think provides a little bit more stability yeah. for renters. Uh, bond rollovers, so you're not losing your bond before you have to pay the next one. So that makes the money that you've already put down as a bond a bit more useful. For people who are on longer-term leases, moving to more standardised agreements, so if you're renting a property for a long term, it, that's your home. You may not necessarily own it, but people really put a lot of their spirit and soul into those places. Yeah. So making sure that those standardised agreements are a little bit easier for both parties to utilise and making sure we're really cracking down on that rent bidding so that you're not finding yourself, if you are in one of those queues, uh, in a, a legal bidding process for any rental properties. It all sounds great, but your government has been in power for a long time. This is your fifth election individually. Mm. Are you guys old and tired? Is the state ready for something fresh, regardless of how amazing all these policies are? Oh, I couldn't disagree more with the concept of old and tired. I think if you look at the Premier, he's... I th he's one of the youngest premiers going around, particularly in history, but I think he's really showing a lot of energy. I think he's out on the campaign trail. He's talking to small businesses. He's talking to parents. He's really listening to what people are saying about the short-term pressures they've got on their budgets. And he's also talking to them about making sure we don't lose track of our long-term economic plan. I, I think he's really punching out the energy and so is the rest of the team. So this concept of old and tired, have a look at the team. It's young, it's fresh, it's bringing new ideas to the table. There's too much emphasis put on youth as well sometimes, I find. Well, I think we've got a nice blend of experience, a nice blend of diversity. People across our front bench who have been in the parliament have different types of work experiences, people who are representing different parts of Sydney, regional New South Wales. I think one of the great things about our team is the diversity of people that are in it. You mentioned budget before. You guys have made a lot of promises. That's what happens in the mm. lead-up to an election. How will you pay for them? The Premier's ruled out this week the privatisation of major assets. So, debt, is that the only way that you'll be able to pay for them, going into more debt? Well, debt is one thing that we've got, and we've got a more than manageable debt position already in New South Wales, but we've got a $116 billion infrastructure program. As we complete one project, we can start another one. Uh, there's only one side in New South Wales politics at the moment that's cancelling projects, and that's Labor. They're already cancelling projects from opposition. They spent a whole term in government cancelling projects going into 2011 and they haven't even got onto the Treasury benches before they're already cancelling rail projects in Western Sydney, tunnels linking regional New South Wales. So if you're really committed to the idea of infrastructure and infrastructure growing the economy, there's only one side out there talking about that. Anthony Albanese's 
copped a hammering this week. I've spoken about it a couple of times so far in this show. Is that giving you guys a little boost, do you think? Is that distrust of Labor federally going to kind of water its way down to state? Well, if you're worried about the interest rates that have happened under Anthony Albanese or you're worried about Anthony Albanese coming after your money in superannuation, imagine if there were two of them, because that's what would happen in New South Wales. So I think Labor's really put a big marker out there about what trust means. Chris Minns is doing exactly the same thing. OK, what about in your side? Uh, a reporter from ICAC has called a, an inquiry into the Hill Shire um, in terms of potential dodgy behaviour between developers and the Liberal Party. The Premier's brother was called to appear, didn't appear. This stuff is, is murky, it's not nice. Does it hurt your party? Well, I think what's most important here is we've got an independent body that investigates potentially corrupt conduct. It does so appropriately without destroying people's reputations. We want to make sure that those investigations happen where they should take place, not in an overtly partisan location like the Upper House of New South Wales Parliament. Like, there's nothing but political point scoring going on there. So if there is something that's inappropriate, refer it to ICAC. That's exactly what the Premier has done and let those people get on with their job. Will you win? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I think it'll be. I think so. Well, it's tight. Like I'm not taking yeah. it for granted. I think it'll be. I think in Penrith it'll be really, really close. Yeah. So I'm not out there like you know being all Pollyanna about it. I think if there's <laughs> going to be an election result in in Penrith that favours me, it's going to be a really tight result. And I think that's the same situation in New South Wales right now. I think people are just sort of starting to pay a bit more attention mm. to the leaders. They don't really know much about Chris Minns, they don't really hear much about what his plan is, and I think they're really just starting to see Dominic Perrottet come into his own. He's had to deal a lot with crisis and natural disasters and take on the leadership. Now they're really seeing a guy who's managed the economy through its most testing circumstances. He stepped up to the plate as the leader of the state, and I think he's doing a good job. He'll give you a good tick for that. Well done. Stuart Ayres, thank you so Thanks much for much. joining me. Really appreciate Cheers. it. Best of luck as well. Thank I'm you sure very we'll much. check in after the election. Cool. Thank you.